right there. Last week I began a conversation about commands from our leader. Our leader being Jesus Christ as we know him. Last week I shared through the teachings of Jesus and as he walked on the earth and then the Holy Spirit's guidance into the writing of the books that we read in the scripture of the apostles, Jesus gave us commands to follow as Christians. 1,050 to be exact. Of course, we've kind of narrowed it down, as I said, to about 800 headings due to repetition of some. These commands cover every phase of our lives in relationship to God and relationship to each other. If we obey them, these commands bring a reward that lasts forever. If we disobey them, they bring condemnation and punishment into our world. As Christians, we are either walking through life thinking, I found Christ and He came into my life, I accepted him, now I can go live however I want to live. Or today's conversation is going to be, I can awaken to righteousness. Everybody say, awaken to righteousness. When I awaken to righteousness, that means that I am allowing Jesus to be the Lord of my life in every way and every part of my life. His commands I follow. Awakening to righteousness means I am taking God's word seriously. Seriously. This is what it defines a Christian right here. A Christian who is serious about his or her faith is that they're gaining knowledge all the time of God's ways compared to someone else that is considered lukewarm that does not show themselves to be approved. They're not studying the word, and they're not looking for more of Jesus. They're living their life in any way they see fit or fashion, and they're not concentrating and taking the word of God seriously. Look at your neighbor and say, seriously? Revelations 3.16 says this, So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will... Some say, vomit you out of my mouth or spew you out of my mouth. I think it's important that we are serious about God and his word. Would you say amen to that? We as Christians cannot play with our own salvations. I want you to hear that. We as Christians cannot play with our own salvations. And we cannot think that God will overlook our sin because we go living however we see fit. Yeah, we received God. We asked him into our heart. But I don't live it out because I haven't made him Lord of my life. See, when you're making him Lord of your life, that means you're taking in every concept and every precept that he has in the word of God so that you can see how you are to live as a child of God. This has a serious eternal effect on you and your soul. So what does Paul say about how we should consider righteous living? He's a lot of word in the scripture about this. He admonishes us to take it serious, to be awake or awakened or be alert or be paying close attention. You ever had your teacher in school say, pay attention. You're going to miss something here. You're not going to learn what you need to learn if you don't be alert and pay attention. And that's what Paul is saying here. So let's look at righteousness here for a moment or the other way of seeing it. Things, what does righteousness mean? It means I'm taking things serious in my walk with God. I want righteousness. 1 Corinthians 15, 34 in the New King James says this, Awake to righteousness and do not sin for some do not have the knowledge of God I speak this to your shame another version says it like this in the New Living Testament 1 Corinthians 15 13 says it this way think carefully about what is right and stop sinning 
For to your shame I say that some of you don't know God at all. I think this is where we as Christians have to be awake or awaken to what we should be doing and understanding and learning of our Christ and His Word and how we should live. We have a a form of religion to some degree, but we need Jesus to be Lord of our life. I'm going to say that over and over today because until we grasp that, that means I'm not my own. I belong to him. My flesh died and he came alive in me when I accepted him as the Lord of my life. I can't continue to just do what I want to do. Matthew 5, 6 says this, Blessed are they that hunger and thirst for righteousness. They shall be filled. In other words, I hunger for more of God. I hunger for right standing with God. That's what this is talking about. I need to be serious about God in my life and and how he sees me and how I live and where I go and what I do and what I participate in and, and how I talk and how I just do everything in this life because I need to be doing it the way Christ wants me to do it. Otherwise, I'm not doing it in right standing and I'm walking away. What does it mean to awake to righteousness or to be serious or think carefully? Being awake to righteousness is the same as being serious about keeping the word of God. Being aware, being alert, putting God's word into practice in every way, you know, I went and watched the Lobos on Friday night and it's taken 10 weeks for them to learn. They've been practicing over and over and over how to block, right? How How to make this opening of a hole, how to run the play. It's practice over and over and over, repetition over and over and they proved that they had learned pretty well on Friday night. I was happy about that. We say we're a Christian. We show up at church. We look the part when we need it. But are you really practicing the character of Christ? Take life seriously actually doesn't mean that I have a facade and I look the part and I look real serious and pious about God. You know, there's certain traditional pious ways and I'm serious. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about a fakeness. People see through your fakeness. It's not a heaviness where... You know, everything is somber and gloomy and in your appearance. You're a Christian. You are can't do this and can't do that. That's not what I'm talking about. Listen, I can be serious right in the middle of a joyful moment. We were praising God a while ago. I was serious as ever, but I'm full of joy and strength was coming into my life and I pray it was coming into yours and I can be serious and praise. David praised with a dance and he was serious. All right? I hadn't seen you dancing lately, so maybe you're not too serious. I don't know. Being serious means that I live according to the light or the information or knowledge of God that I have. See, that's what it's about. I reach and I strive to get a hold of more. See, that's what Paul was saying. I strive towards the mark. Every day I want to get better. Every day I'm going to practice more so I can be the better person. I can be more like Jesus. I'm going to strive every day. I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to keep going. No matter what the circumstance, I know I can trust in God. God, I'm straining for more. Listen, I cannot as a Christian be satisfied or happy with what I know right now. I'm not happy with what I know right now. I know there's room to grow because, listen, God is omnipotent. He is omniscient. He is, ha- he is everywhere at the same time. He has all power, all knowing. He has everything that I need to have in my life. 
And there's so much more. My little old infinite mind, it cannot take, you know, all of it probably, I know. But in him, I can trust and believe and I can walk in his character and I can have all that I need. I should hunger for more, as Matthew 5, 6 said, hunger for righteousness so that I can keep pleasing God. How do I do that as a young person? How do I do that as a a mom or a dad or a grandparent? It's a daily thing. It's every day living a life. I didn't do so well yesterday, okay. I'm going to do better today. And I'm going to strive to be a little better today. If I didn't quite do right yesterday, I'm going to do right today. You know, this is where we get messed up. The enemy and, and even church in times past has said, well, you're so messed up, you can never be, be right with God. And so we just don't come to church at all. We push God away and say, well, I can't do it right. I, I can't live up to that standard, so I guess I'm no good. I'm gonna, God's going to just cast me to hell because I can't live it. Well, no, you can't in the flesh. Paul talks about walking in the Spirit and helping us in Romans, talking about being strengthened. That's the only way we can live in this life and be overcomers. Our flesh is weak. So I need to be constantly in the Word. How do I do it as a young person, a mom, a dad, a grandparent? I need to be reading the Scripture on a daily basis. I need to be taking something in to help me grow, even if it's just one verse. One verse that you take in and you just regurgitate over and over every day of your your walk in that day and looking at things in the light of what he is trying to say to you through that verse to help you grow. I need to please God so that my salvation is secure. And not only that, that I'm being an example for others to lead them in their salvation. Because God has commanded us commanded us to keep his precepts and commandments diligently. There's a word in the scripture. It's called sanctification. Sanctification. The only way I can become sanctified is that I live according to his precepts and his commands diligently trying to be what he is. Sanctification is the process. I want you to catch that word, process, by which you are transformed to have a divine nature by the act of consistently putting sin to death by resisting temptation. That's the definition. I'm consistently taking on the nature of God so that I can put sin to death. What sin? My sin. To consistently put it to death. Sanctifying. It's the process. It's the daily thing that I put into my life. The process to transform my thinking. To to take over the sin nature of my flesh. And I put it in subjection to Jesus Christ. That is sanctification. Every day. And doing this is considered and, and, and considering growth in your life. You need to grow and you need to develop in the knowledge of Jesus. It's of utmost importance in your life. Why? Because I want to go to heaven. How about you? I want to go to heaven. I think that's pretty important that I think every one of us should want to go to heaven. And so to be sanctified, that means I'm growing and I'm developing and I'm processing and I'm working it out and I'm transforming every day of my life to be closer and like Jesus so I can go to heaven. Paul said this was serious business. Acts 20 and verse 31. So be on your guard. Remember that for three years, I never stopped warning each of you night and day with tears. I want to be like Paul today. I want to exhort to you with tears in my spirit to be serious about your relationship with God. See, in the last days, the Bible says, even the elect shall fall away. And the reason it's saying that is they lose their faith. They lose their trust. They lose their trust in God and what's happening around them. And some have been doing so already. And I'm here to tell you to take your relationship with God serious. Every day, he exhorted night and day, 
because he saw that the seriousness of life was draining them and he wanted them to be serious about God. Where do you stand each day with concern for your own salvation? Have you even thought about it? Do you just only think about it on Sundays? I want to be saved. I'll go to church. You should be thinking about your salvation every hour of every day, thinking, God, you could come at any moment. The Bible says that we should be looking to the eastern skies and eagerly awaiting his coming. Is it a concern that you have to be saved? I hope it is. Or are you serious about your salvation and maybe even how your salvation and your walking it out will affect others? Because, see, you're accountable I'm accountable for one another. If I'm not protecting you, we just read about it in Romans 14 and just studied about how my reactions and how I live and what I do affects those around me. And I need to be thinking about that, whether it's a sin for me. It may not be a sin for me, but if I'm causing my brother to fall, then I'm in trouble. It becomes a sin. We have to be living a sanctified life. Helping others find Jesus and protecting our own salvation in our walk with God. Many of you know the story, parable, the five wise virgins and the foolish five virgins. They took things extremely serious, the five did, the five wise. I want you to notice it says wise and foolish. The wise took serious. The foolish, carefree, not worried about anything, just lived the way I want to live, virgins. They didn't. They didn't prepare. Unfortunately, they weren't prepared when the bridegroom came. And I want to read to you these 13 verses, and I'm almost done. Matthew 25, 1 through 13 parable of the ten virgins. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like. What does at that time mean? Does that mean now? At that time, talking about the end time. It's talking about the last days. Talking about when Jesus is about to come. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps The foolish one said to the wise, give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later, the others came Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. Are you full? Are you carrying a little extra? Are you learning a little more? Are you serious about what you're about to encounter in your life? in the relationship with God, encountering heaven. We, we're not promised any other days. We could be encountering him tonight or tomorrow. You don't know. You've got to be serious about it. Not in a somber way. Well, that's heavy, Pastor. I'm talking about in a joyful way that I have the opportunity to know Jesus Christ firsthand and have him in my life where it's joy and unspeakable and full of glory and I'm overwhelmed with his experience in my life. It's however you perceive it and however you desire him to be in your life. You can be serious, but you got to be prepared. That's what this is talking about. I have to be prepared. 
I have to have that oil burning inside of me to where I'm ready when the bridegroom comes and says, come on in. Being serious about your growth and right standing with God means everything. Talk about acting on God's promptings for a moment. When God places a call on our lives or when I sense God prompting me to give something to someone or something, do I immediately do it or do I negotiate with God? When God tells you to do something or help someone or pray for someone, do I immediately... Yes, Lord. Or do I negotiate back and forth? Am I really taking life seriously? When I let my feelings, well, I don't know, they may reject me. I don't know what they'll say to me. I mean, then we start reasoning, and then we, we're hindered with our own deception and, and fear when God asks us to do something. Let me tell you, when I'm able to take action, when it comes to things that I'm supposed to do without putting them off, then I know I'm taking life seriously. Because immediately the prompting of the Holy Spirit, if you're seeking after him for more, immediately that should be a a time of truth and trust. And you say, yes, Lord. See, that's when you know that you're really diving in and you're taking on all that God has for you and you're trusting in God. Right now, more than ever, trusting in God. God, I trust you. Okay, you say do that, I'm going to do that. See, the devil, he's not going to tell you to help anybody. So you know it's God when he's saying pray for somebody, help somebody, give them this, help them with that. You know, go, go take them a bag of groceries or something. Or maybe it's just to go say, hey, God loves you today. He told me to tell you. You don't know what that means in a life, right? We don't know. It's like Noah. Noah built an ark. Oh, seriously, God? I don't see no rain. It's it's a bright day. It's sun shining. Well, if you don't build an ark, Noah, you're going to be left behind. Well, okay, God, I guess I'll take you serious, right? Are we going to be like Noah where, you know, we build the ark? I mean, the ark didn't build itself. He was either going to have perdition or destruction for taking the life that God had for him by being sanctified, living out what God's asking him to do. And not only did he have to do it, he had to do it to exact and precision of what God asked him to do. There's commands in the word of God that we should be acting on to precision, not because we're perfect, but because he's perfect. Me and you must work in the same way our own salvation as Noah did for his. Noah had to work for his salvation. He built an ark. He built his own salvation, right? Do we see it that way? Do you understand that? He built his own salvation. That's why it says study to show yourself approved. We have to build that in our trust in God. We have to trust, like Philippians 2, 12, without fear and trembling. We have to, or I'm sorry, with fear and trembling. We have to trust that God has given us direction and and we trust in his principle and his word with fear and trembling, with respect and, and understanding. And I take it serious. Philippians 2.12, therefore, my dear brothers, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Seriously, all the more I must obey and be reverent to the commands of God. You know, I cannot just look at the word of God and pick and choose. Can't say I'm going to obey this and not obey this. I must look at the whole understanding. I have to look at what God is saying completely so that I can live my life 100% to his teachings. So that I can be sanctified. 
pushing sin out. And the last thing, take all of God's word seriously. All. Everybody say all. The word of God will be an eternal judgment for me if I reject it. If I reject it, I'm going to be judged by this whole book. And it's eternal salvation if I receive it and do it. If I act upon it, if I transform myself, his blood transforms me every day. My life and your life, we will be judged according to what is in the scripture. And I want you to take it serious. I want to give you four things to think about that we've talked about here as I close. I know I'm taking life seriously when I am living according to the light that I have. See, God's not asking you to live to the light of somebody else. Well, they know more than me. Well, they may because they've been around and they have been a Christian maybe longer than you. And you only have this much learned and they have this much learned. But according to what you know is your judgment and how you are going to be judge and I can't say well I'm not going to learn anything so I don't get judged by that that's not what I'm talking about but the light on which you understand I have to be living according to that I know I'm taking life seriously when I'm reaching out for more of God's fullness you should desire more of God every day You should want to be like him, keeping God's word diligently. I know I'm taking life seriously when I'm acting immediately when God prompts without me negotiating. Yes, Lord, I'll do it, whatever you say. I'm taking life seriously when I'm carrying out God's works with exactness and precision. Like Noah, do it this way and you will survive. Do it this way, and your salvation is, will, will be taken care of. And lastly, I'm taking life seriously when I'm taking all of God's word serious. We are commanded. I'm talking about God's commands, and I've taken just this one. We are commanded to awaken to right living in God. We are commanded. Take that serious. Your salvation depends on it. Now is the time to live that righteous life. Don't wait. Don't wait at all. It's time to do it today. I'm going to ask you to stand. You're perfect, Phil. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not. I'm striving just like you. I have a light just like you of what I have knowledge of. Each one of you and us are on a different understanding level, but that's okay. I live to that level. I'm going to ask you to do something a little different today because I felt this as I was entering into here today if you're ahead of your household man or woman you're the leader of your home would you come forward today just come stand with me right here some of you may be saying well I'm not sure which one of us is but well then both of you come just line up across here guys ladies Listen, the responsibility is on you. Every person standing here to lead your family. And I'm looking.
looking you in the eye because you're the one that will guide your family. And it's important that you are doing your part. It's got to be serious with you. I can understand. You know, I have raised children. And I see the seriousness of the moment. My children didn't ever see serious situations. I saw danger when they never saw the danger. I saw things that that could befall them, and and, and I was there to protect them, right? I was there to guide them and help them and walk with them. And this is you now in their salvation. Not just providing a roof over their head or making sure that they have a meal to eat or I'm talking about their eternal self. What's more important? What's more important? Their life in heaven with you is most important, don't you say? That's what I believe. And so I'm challenging all of you. And I'm not leaving anybody out. I'm challenging everyone, but mainly the heads of your home. You are the one that's putting things in order. And you can help guide and direct your families. And I want you to take on that seriousness with me today. I'm doing that. I take it serious. I have to be cautious of my perception in their lives. Not that I'm putting on a facade, but that I'm letting them see that I am going to be the strength because God gives me strength. And the only way that's going to happen is if I'm daily with God right so it's important that you are showing that strength of God because they're going to help uh, it's going to help them make decisions in their own way of looking at God so I want us to pray as a matter of fact I need a microphone thank you Elder John I would like you to pray over each of these heads of homes here today, if you would, sir. Almighty God, today, these men stand here with an awesome responsibility in their life. This hour that we're living in, men need to stand tall. They need to realize in the Word of God Their place is a place of leadership. It's a place of awesome responsibility. Not something to be taken lightly, but to study the Word of God and see what that place is. And to assume that place with love, compassion, but with authority. We pray, O God, you give them the grace that they need every day as leaders of their household. We know that they need tremendous grace, O God. We know, Lord, that they come into criticism from this world because that place is being replaced. But we know it's not replaced according to God. So we pray, God, thou stand tall take the responsibility, walk humbly before their God, and walk with compassion and with love. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Elder. You may go back to your seats. I appreciate you being willing today. We're going to close this service with a song. But I pray you leave here this morning with a new inspiration of hope and not only that a desire to take your salvation seriously don't be one as I've said earlier the elect shall fall away the Bible says in the last hour because their hearts fail them of fear and lack of trust don't be a part of that number We have to stand in faith, not just because of our situations in our nation today, 
but our whole world needs to see your faith. We have so much more than just what's at stake within America. We have the world to contend with. And the enemy is out to do his work, and we're going to have to do ours greater than he ever has. And that's through Jesus Christ. So be Jesus and take it serious that he's in your life. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for the opportunity to be in your house today for enrichment and strength, for knowledge. Thank you for the light that you shared. Put a hunger within us and a thirst within us for more righteousness. We give you the praise today in Jesus' precious name. If you haven't need in your life, if you have a need that you need prayer for, if you're looking and you've never asked Jesus to be the Savior of your life, our prayer team's going to be up front as we sing this song, and we welcome you to join in and allow them to pray with you. We love you. God bless you.